Australia has offered to help fund elections in Solomon Islands as the Pacific Island country debates a contentious bill to push the poll back by a year. Foreign Affairs reporter Stephen Jadgetz has more. The government of Solomon Islands argues that they can't possibly hold the elections next year because they're also holding the Pacific Games. That's a pretty major event which will bring in thousands of athletes from across the region to the capital Honiara to compete. Uh, now the government's argument is basically they don't have the money nor the bandwidth to make both of these events happen successfully within the same year. This is very contentious though. The opposition is not convinced. It says that uh, the Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavare probably has ulterior motives and they say that there's simply no reason why the events can't be held perhaps a few months apart. Um, and they've uh, also labelled the government's push on this front profoundly anti-democratic. Now this is live right now at the moment. This, this week in, uh, in the Parliament of Solomon Islands we've got a bill that will essentially take that uh, constitution and make an amendment to it to allow the uh, the elections to be pushed back. The government has also contentiously uh, axed or rather pushed it through ahead of a committee process that was meant to be happening this week which has again drawn howls of complaint from the opposition. Uh, that's the background then to this offer from Australia to fund the elections this year. Uh, a really contentious debate in Solomon Islands and broader anxieties about its trajectory and, and anti-democratic slippage in Canberra. So Stephen, do we know if this offer might convince the government to go ahead with the election as scheduled? There's no sign of it so far. Now, we don't know exactly when this offer was made, uh, but I, I'm told it did happen relatively recently, so perhaps in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but in those two weeks, the government has seemed intent on pushing ahead with its bill to push back the election. So if there is any interest in Solomon Islands' part, then there have been no public demonstrations of that, there have been no statements of that, and there's certainly no sign of any willingness on behalf of Manasseh Sogavare or his government uh, to take a backward step. Now the opposition was the uh, the entity that originally called for this intervention from Australia. They say that if the if the government of Australia offers to stump up the funds then that deprives Manasseh Sokovari of his excuse and uh, will make it more difficult for him to push it back. Australia though is treading very carefully here. It doesn't want to be accused of meddling in Solomon Islands domestic politics and it doesn't want to enrage Manasseh Sokovari, particularly given some of the tensions uh, that are in the relationship at the moment in the wake of uh, the contentious security pact that's been signed with China. So Australia is trying to tread carefully here. It's made it clear to Solomon Islands that the money is there, that there is an offer there for help to ensure that the elections can happen as scheduled. But there have been no, there's been no actual criticism of Solomon Islands from the Australian government and no attempt, at least in public, to ramp up pressure on Mr Sogavare to convince him to stick with the original election timetable. That may change if he sticks with the current plan but so far, no sign of that. And Stephen, Australia has been exempt from a moratorium on naval ship visits to Solomon Islands. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, this uh, story blew up a couple of weeks ago when uh, a US uh, Coast Guard ship was effectively blocked from Solomon Islands. So the, the government then said that there was a moratorium on all naval vessels from, uh, from overseas ships and that really did stir quite a lot of concern, not just in Canberra but also in Washington. There were some people in the State Department and elsewhere who took this as another sign that Solomon Islands was increasingly isolated, uh, increasingly close to China and increasingly, you know, either indifferent to or perhaps even hostile to Western countries like uh, Australia and the United States. We have got a bit more clarity though in the last couple of days. Yesterday Manasseh Sogavare told Parliament that Australia, New Zealand and Fiji were all exempt from that moratorium uh, on naval ship visits. Uh, that's because there's an existing treaty that governs the protocols for those uh, for those ships coming in. Uh, and he also said that uh, ships uh, that were involved in uh, Forum Fisheries Agency uh, trips to the region were also exempt from the ban. So it's a little bit less hard edged than it looked like at the first instance. Nonetheless, uh, there remains quite a bit of concern about Solomon Islands trajectory and certainly in America, in, in Washington DC, there is a lot of angst about uh, its growing closeness uh, to China and quite a bit of pressure on Australia to do more to arrest that situation. Australia though, its options are relatively limited despite the enormous leverage that, that we've got with Solomon Islands. We want to tread very carefully. The last thing we want to do is incite a furious response from Mr Sokovare has, who has already and repeatedly shown himself to be a very mercurial character uh, capable of acting in very unexpected ways very quickly.